And our gospel lesson today comes from Luke 13, 10 through 17. Healing on the Sabbath. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. A woman was there who had been disabled by the Spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and couldn't stand up straight. When he saw her, Jesus called to her and said, Woman, you are... You are set free from your sickness. He placed his hands on her, and she straightened up at once and praised God. The synagogue leader insists that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, responded, There are six days during which work is permitted. Come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord replied, Hypocrites, don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from its stall and lead it to drink? Then isn't it necessary that this woman, a daughter of Abraham, bound by Satan for 18 long years, be set free from her bondage and on the Sabbath day? When he said these things, all his opponents were put to shame, but all those in the crowd rejoiced at the extraordinary things he, had done, he was doing. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The word hypocrite in Greek means mask. And, as you see, we have masks. In the ancient days, the actors, all of them were male, would hold masks up in front of their face So, as as they did their performance. And then by putting on the mask, they put on a new persona. In fact, the word persona is from the Latin word for mask. Now, we don't use masks anymore. We just have the actors up there. Sometimes they put on prosthetics, but it's the actor who carries the story. And sometimes we confuse the actor with the character. Now, there are some actors for whom that is the way they acted. For instance, people went to a John Wayne movie to watch John Wayne play John Wayne. That's just the way he was. But then there was George Reeves, who was afraid he would become stereotyped as Superman and Sean Connery got out of the James Bond business for the same fear. Now there are some actors who are so good at it we do see the character in them and then we see another character in the same actor in some other story, some other film. For instance, Nicolas Cage played a really obnoxious person of the lie in The Lord of Wars. He played a gun runner, a gun uh, dealer, and uh, he was a mess. His life ate him alive. Then he comes out with a movie called The Family Man, and he plays a fellow who has his struggles, but he learns to get out of his ego chains and to become truly alive. And two different characters. Johnny Depp's another ex- uh, example that you've seen, where he, when he takes on a role, he becomes that role. There's a huge difference between, I, I understand, his Tonto and his uh, Jack Sparrow. They are not at all the same character. Masks, we wear them all the time. And this is what Jesus is speaking to. He's speaking to you actors, you, you masks. How dare you pretend to know what's right? Being an actor was not a great thing in the Roman world. Actually, it were mostly slaves who did it, and you could be disposed of very easily because of those silly masks. Nobody would know you were gone. And all, in all times, good religious people have had a suspicion of actors. We're not sure, are they telling us the truth? Are they being real with us? Because it's putting on this face, putting on this mask. In fact, it wasn't until the 1980s we had an actor run for president because we didn't trust an actor to tell the truth. So it is. Jesus is speaking to these people, not because they are terrible people. It's just that they have completely identified with the mask. They have identified with their boundaries. You see, Sabbath is an important thing. Especially back in the Roman days 
where the Jews in, in Palestine were occupied and they were under the gun and there were, there were forces out there to try to make them Roman or Greek in their life. And this wasn't the first time the northern half of Israel, the northern kingdom, was hauled off when they were conquered by the Assyrians and they were spread all over the Assyrian Empire and they lost their culture, they lost their language, they lost their God, they lost who they were. They became what we call the ten lost tribes. It wasn't they got out in the desert and got turned around. They just disappeared from the pages of history. Lost it. When the Babylonians took the best and the brightest from Jerusalem and Judah to Babylon, they were under the gun to accept the language, the gods, the words, the names, the food, and they became in danger of losing their culture. And so Daniel tells about this, tells about the young men who were faced with fiery furnaces and and dens of lions for not breaking down and becoming Babylonian. Daniel also prophesies that there will be a ruler who came by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes who put his statue in the Holy of Holies in Jerusalem and called it Zeus. And he forbade circumcision, he forbade forbade worshiping God, and he tried to turn everything around. And they nearly lost their culture. The Romans are doing the same thing, the Roman culture. If you go to Sepphoris, just north of, of Nazareth, you see a Roman city in the middle of a Jewish area. The pictures... There's a a mosaic there on the floor. It's obviously a mosaic for a triclinium to be sitting there. And there's these panels just like like a comic strip telling the story of Hercules and Bacchus having a drinking contest. And if you know anything about Hercules, you know he's the big strong guy, not too bright. And Bacchus is the god of wine. So guess who won? (laughs) Anyway has nothing to do with Judaism. They're being sucked into this foreign culture. And the thing they can hang on to, everybody can hang on to, is the Sabbath. The Sabbath is important because that's how you know you're Jewish. It is not like our blue laws where we tried to make everybody take Sunday off. It was just for Jews. It was just for God's people. God did not make people to observe the Sabbath. He made the Sabbath for people to give them a day off. Nobody else in the ancient world had a day off, period. Especially peasants and and slaves. You just worked every single day, one day after the other. You had no day to stop and to rest and to contemplate your life and your God and your culture except for the Jews. So when Jesus does this healing on a Sabbath, he is threatening these people who have built this boundary. And it's a good boundary, but all they have right now is the boundary. They have come to identify with the boundary. We do that. Christians do that. Some Christians identify with the Bible as the Word of God, capital W, capital G, Word of God. Methodists tend to see it as the words about the Word of God, who is Jesus Christ. Instead of using the Bible as a lens through which to see God, some people take that extra step away and worship the lens. And the same is true with the Sabbath. What's happening in Jesus' time. We've done this all along. There's always been people. There were, there were people in Jesus' day. There were people in our day. The Islam, the, the radical Islams, they have started to focus with the wall on the line of their boundaries. 
And that's the mistake. They become the mask. They become the problem. Hypocrisy. It's not just people being cruel. You realize that out there, there are a great number of people who think that everybody in here is a hypocrite. Right? And it's real hard to discuss it with them because they've already decided you're a hypocrite and all you want to do is drag them into church so that you can look better than them. Or whatever it is. Well, in that, in some ways, they're just like Jesus. They and Jesus are on the same page. Might as well come to church. When I'm in a really smart eye community, I said, yeah, we're all hypocrites. Come on in. You'll feel right at home. That's, that's not a right thing to say. They won't, I found that it doesn't work. <laughs> but in some ways, we do have a boundary. We do have a wall. Well, no, not a wall. We don't want a wall, but we have who we are. And there are some people who don't feel like they are within that boundary. And they call us hypocrites. And maybe we are. Or maybe we look like we are because we act like we're saved. How can we be saved when you think of all the things we've done? And every one of you knows the things you've done. Things you've thought. How can you consider yourself right with God? And that drives people crazy. In the 12th century, in the 1100s, there was a couple by the name of Abelard and Heloise. They were both scholars. They were both uh, teachers in, in universities back then, what we would call universities now. They were writers, and they fell in love. Now, it was an illicit affair. Both of them had pledged celibacy in their occupation to be great scholars. They were not going to marry. And yet they had this affair outside of marriage. And it wound up in Heloise becoming pregnant. And that kind of let the cat out of the bag. The child was named Astrolabe, which is the thing that you look at to see all about the heavens. And he disappears from history. We don't know what happened to him. Heloise and Abelard both went to uh, orders, a convent, a, a, a monastery, and they stayed in touch with letters, and we have their letters. And in one of the letters, Heloise writes, people declare me to be chaste who do not perceive that I am a hypocrite. They ascribe purity to the flesh, of the flesh to virtue, but since virtue is not of the body but of the soul, I have some praise from men, but do not deserve any from God, who is the judge of heart and entrails and sees what is hidden. In other words, people see her and they think, what a wonderful, virtuous woman she is, and she knows deep in her heart about the affair, and the betrayal, and her failure. And sometimes that gets us too. At least it gets me. Because though I try to be the perfect pastor and religious person, I can have my moments and be very hurtful. I think this is God's way of getting us to wake up to our hypocrisy and to grow beyond it. To grow beyond it, we have to stand back and to look at ourselves totally honestly. Is it all about the Sabbath or is it about something else? Is it all about how we hold our mouths just right when we pray or is it something else? Is it something with me? We mentioned St. Therese of Lysio who wrote, if you are willing to bear serenely the trial of being displeasing to yourself, then you will be for Jesus 
a pleasant place of shelter. If you're willing to face your own failings and falsehoods and your mask and take it off in front of God, you become a pleasant place of shelter for Jesus. Because when you get down to it, that is the basis of our faith, is of what Jesus does with it. We are not stuck with this hypocrisy forever. At the base of our faith, we bring it to Jesus who says it's more important that we care for others than anything else we do. Paul says love is the most important thing. St. Augustine said, love, then do what you will in love. And that breaks through all the hypocrisy. You see, we are faced with that mask of being perfect. I never lie. I'm not afraid. I am trustworthy. That's the face we like to show the world. But through the love of Jesus Christ, we have the opportunity and maybe the courage to take that mask and remove it. I'm afraid. I do lie. But Jesus takes all of that and he heals it and he erases it and he gives it back to us in forgiveness and grace. Christ removes every trace. Thanks be to God.